On the 31st of August 2022, General Motors and LG Chem or LG Energy Solutions, as they like to be known as these days, don't get it wrong though, they are one of the world's biggest petrochemical companies, began production of a massive battery manufacturing plant in Ohio. Well, within the last 24 hours, Honda has now announced it will also join this party in the same state, in Ohio. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel even more on Patreon, I'll put a link in the description below. I just want to say a big shout out to our Patreon supporters and a big shout out to our channel members. If you want to be a channel member and get some of our videos in advance, I'll put a link in the description below. Honda, they've been very, very late to the electrification party. I mean, so late, in fact, that they've said to General Motors, can you make our EVs for us? And of course, as you know, in China, GAC make their electric cars for them there. So they, you know, don't have a whole lot of options here. But at least they seem to have really started to change their mind within the last couple of months on EVs. They're now saying that they really do want to make millions of EVs. And in fact, they're now saying they're going to make twice as many EVs in 2030 as Toyota are committing to do so, which is pretty significant considering Toyota are the biggest company in the world. 10 million vehicles sales per year. So that's a good thing. The crazy thing is here, right? And when I get into these details, you'll see that it is a little bit crazy, is that General Motors, I mean, they have very limited free cash flow. That's why they're raising funds, why they just took out a $2.5 billion loan from the US government. It's why they've also issued bonds in order to raise more cash. But Honda, they're going to have to do the same exact thing. However, they're upping the ante pretty significantly. This is going to be a $4.4 billion US dollar battery factory in Ohio that they're going to build as a joint venture with LG Energy Solutions. As of today, Honda has around $12 billion in free cash flow, but only five years ago, they were in the negative. They had no money. And the thing is, pretty much every, well, not pretty much, every factory that Honda currently builds cars in isn't equipped to build EVs at all. Yes, they do build their little mini electric car in Japan, which they sell very tiny, tiny numbers of, but that's it. So Honda has to spend billions to transform itself into being an electric vehicle manufacturer. And they've committed to doing that, but it's going to cost them a lot of money. And a lot of that money that they have right now is going to be committed to this new battery factory. Now, I personally think they would have been better off simply purchasing batteries from a, the world's biggest battery supplier who seem to be doing a really good job supplying Tesla right now. CATL. If they had have gone with lithium ion phosphate batteries from CATL, I think it would potentially save them, well, in the short term, billions of dollars. That would be my strategy if I was Honda. But clearly, the key reason that this has all happened comes down to one thing. Why didn't they go that route? It's very obvious why they didn't, isn't it? It's because of the Democrats, the Biden administration's push of this new IRA, right? The new so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which is a stupid name in my opinion, but who cares? The act for EVs and for manufacturing in the US has, well, it's reaped enormous dividends. Who would have thought that in the space of less than two months, we would see more than $20 billion committed to manufacturing in the United States from all these companies, right? Less than two months. It's been staggering. Many of you have been criticizing me for being for, for supporting the act um, in emails. Some of you have been very vitriolic. Some of you have been just had shared your opinion with me. That's fine. Everyone has an opinion on that. That's okay. But you have to admit, in terms of the investment from companies, multiple companies over the past two months, it's been an and an enormous success. Now, other parts of the bill, yeah, I'm not so sure about them, but let's not get into those details because here on this channel, we just focus on EVs, battery manufacturing, renewable energy, right? They're the key things we're focusing on. So let's just forget about whatever those are. If you want to argue that those are wrong or right or whatever, I don't care because that's not my area of expertise at all. 
If you're gonna argue though on the investments into electric vehicle production, into battery production, it's been an unmitigated success. This is enormous. It's enormous for the United States, for jobs. It's enormous for geopolitical stability. Why? Because China owns like 90% of the global battery market right now. That is crazy. That's dangerous. That's a position of, that's a, that's a complete monopoly. Uh, I don't know why the US isn't calling this out. The media should be calling this out. They should be saying, there's a huge monopoly. In fact, they're too worried about this ridiculous 24-hour Tesla news cycle. What 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 can we say bad about Tesla that will people will read about it? Uh, did a Tesla have a crash anywhere? Is there anywhere that a Tesla crashed? No. Oh, there's one. Yeah, there's one accident. Let's talk about that. I mean, seriously, this is the sort of stuff they should be talking about. Stuff that actually matters: geopolitical stability. If one country basically owns the entire EV production or the majority of it, 90% of it, what does that mean? That's the dangerous position to be in. The US, in my view, had to do this. I don't think they had any other option. They had to incentivize manufacturing of batteries, in particular, in the United States. They've done that, it's clearly working, and it's having its intended result. Remember, this factory is only gonna have a few thousand jobs, not that many, but there will be massive, massive numbers of jobs indirect. For every one automotive industry jobs, there's an extra 10 created, right, an extra 10, but this will be different. Because now we're talking about we're talking about actually getting the lithium. We're talking about actually getting the nickel, the manganese. We're talking about mining it, refining it. There's lots going on here in the entire supply chain. This will lead to less reliance, which the U.S. does have a lot of reliance on China for manufacturing right now, which is uh, in some ways not good. I think. Let me know what you think about that. This will lead to less reliance on China, and I think that that will be a good decision going forward. Honda, good news for them. Ohio, good news for Ohio. In general, the US economy, which is clearly struggling right now, as are many economies around the world, good news for the US economy. So this site is gonna require $3.5 billion of investment from Honda and LG Chem, with an overall project cost of 4.4 billion US dollars. The plant will create 2,200 ongoing permanent jobs. This joint venture between Honda and LGES, LG Chem, LG Energy Solutions, all the same thing, will be formally finalized in 2022, pending regulatory approvals. Construction will begin in 2023 and will be completed by the following year. Honda and LG Chem said the plant is expected to have an annual capacity of 40 gigawatt hours with mass production of pouch type electric vehicle battery cells by the end of 2025. No, not lithium ion phosphate cells. They are kind of a similar battery style, I believe, to what General Motors produces, ternary batteries using nickel, cobalt, and of course, lithium as well. Now, to give you some context, Tesla and Panasonic's joint venture in Nevada that produces 37 gigawatt hours per year as of 2020. We don't know what it produces today. I'm gonna to guess maybe 40 gigawatt hours. So it's gonna be about a similar capacity to that factory in Nevada capacity. Well, in terms of their capacity today, that may change by the time this factory actually comes online and begins producing batteries in 2026. Will it be able to produce 40 gigawatt hours of batteries in 2026 immediately? I doubt it. I'm going to guess that they're going to be ramping up over the course of that year and potentially the following year. This is a lot of battery. 40 gigawatt hours is quite a lot of batteries. And the other thing is here, there is one downside. I mean, Honda are going to have to wait for nearly, well, three and a half years to begin getting batteries from this facility. But that is the result of what happens when you take too long to actually decide disruption's coming, it's here now, or at least it's about to smack us right in the face. We need to get off the crack cocaine. What am I talking about crack cocaine? Well, what's their current way of making money? Selling gasoline powered vehicles. It took Honda a little while to get there. They, you know, they had to wait for the others to lead and then they followed along behind them. But fortunately, They've made this decision. Kudos, Honda. Well done. Good to see it. I'm, as you can see, I'm very pleased about this. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye-bye.